So you guys have seemed to like my videos where I talk about why the far right love certain countries or love certain memes or love certain, I guess, video games or subcultures. But today I thought it'd be interesting to talk about the far right in another country and why they have started loving a separate country. So of course from the title you'll realise I'm talking about why the Indian far right have started to love Israel. Now this might seem like a weird thing. Now it is very very strange especially considering the Hindu nationalists who are in power now in India who do love Israel have close ties to the Nazis with their founding. You know numerous founding members of this group said great things about Hitler, said you know complimentary things about how he dealt with the Jews in Germany and now fast forward that to today where a lot of these Hindu nationalists now talk about how the Israelis, primarily the Jewish Israelis, have dealt with the region and talking about it in a positive way. But before we get any further, if you like my content and you want to support my channel, please like the video, maybe subscribe, maybe share the video. Most of my content is demonetized, including this video, so if you want to support me financially, please look at my Patreon in the description. You will also find my social medias and everything else right there in the description of this video. Now sometimes when stuff pops up on my Twitter to do with India, you see a lot of Indian profiles of just, you know, everyday citizens in India. I remember when the hostility with China was ramping up, you'd see a lot of this stuff. So what you'd normally get is a Twitter user with a Indian flag in their, like, you know, name, but they'd also have an American flag and they'd also have an Israeli flag. And I thought this was quite curious for Indians to have both these countries it also in their usernames. So I want to take an example of one guy who's become quite prominent on Twitter, who is an Indian nationalist who constantly tweets about how good Israel is, just to frame this new phenomenon that is sweeping India since 2014 with Modi's first election. So Haaretz did a good article that said, India's internet Hindus are in love with Israel, Hindu nationalists incessantly tweet their support and admiration for Israel, an online force that helped push Prime Minister Modi to a landslide victory in 2014. So I'm going to talk about this guy. So this article is a bit dated. This guy has only risen in Twitter popularity. I think the article here says he has 70,000 followers. He now has 700,000. So in New Delhi, Anshul Saxena. So in New Delhi, Anshul Saxena spends three to four hours a day on Israel. The 26-year-old gathers information from right-wing websites, blogs, Wikipedia, and the American Jewish Committee website, and India-Israel friendship forums. He has set up alerts to be notified of any India-Israel news and tries to tweet about Israel every day. I think it's helpful to illustrate Anshul's Twitter just because he constantly tries to draw parallels between India and and Israel and talk about you know how they share a similar struggle in terms of culture through you know through the often ethno-nationalism you see in these countries. So back in July 2017 he wrote Israel revived its Hebrew whose fate was similar to Sanskrit about seven decades ago. India should learn from Israel we can revive Sanskrit. So comparing Jerusalem to the northern Indian city where a 16th century mosque was demolished by right-wing Hindu mobs 25 years ago he said India should shift embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and also recognize that Temple Mount belongs to the only Jewish people. What Ayod Ram Manda to Hindus, same Temple Mount to Jews. So what these Hindu nationalists, like I said, like to do, like to draw comparisons with Hindus' historic claims to India and also places like Kashmir and also, you know, Jews and Zionists' claims that Israel and the territory around Israel solely belongs to them. So just to show you some other tweets, so more recent ones, 2018, photo of the day by Israeli community, long live India-Israel relationship. And then um, he is wishing Israel happy Independence Day. And then you've got you know, the Israeli flag with a load of Indian flags as well. So that was just one guy, but he's pretty prominent, but he's really indicative of Hindu nationalists wider view about Israel. They support the Netanyahu government. They support the steps they are taking to annex more territory for the state of Israel. And what these guys like to do is really paint Israel's struggles with the Palestinians like Hindu nationalist struggles with Pakistan or just Indian Muslims or Kashmiris and say that, you know, just like the Jews who have lived in that region for thousands of years, us Hindus have lived in India thousands of years 
and we have a historic right to this land and we should be able to live in a country completely centered around our religion. Now I complain a lot, people don't use a lot of nuance in talking about Israel. I'm not saying this is true for even Netanyahu and a lot of these parties in Israel and government are secular but you can't deny Netanyahu himself as you know a more nationalist type and a lot of the people he encourages in Israel for support are people who do believe this stuff about Israel. So from what I've described already you might think well Hindu nationalism seems to fit quite well with Israeli nationalism so I'm going to get into the roots of the Hindu nationalists because it will be very surprising to you that these guys now ally themselves with Israel considering their links with the German Nazis. So the IB Times wrote a good article back in the day about the links in about 2012 but I'm going to read you some of the more interesting parts I found about the stuff they said during World War II. Oh and just to make it clear the RSS is essentially the militant wing of the BJP, which is the political party. So the article says, perhaps there was no greater admirer of Hitler and Mussolini in India than Vinayak Savarka, another leading member of the RSS. In a speech delivered in 1940, he said, there's no reason to suppose that Hitler must be a human monster because he passes off as a Nazi or Churchill is a demigod because he calls himself a Democrat. Nazism proved undeniably the saviour of Germany under the set of circumstances it was placed in. He also criticised Nehru, who was the first president of India eventually after the Second World War, but was of course a leading member of the National Congress. So he said, who are we to dictate to Germany or Italy to choose a particular form of policy or government? Surely Hitler knows better than Nehru what suits Germany best. The very fact that Germany or Italy has so wonderfully recovered and grown so powerful as never at the touch of Nazi or fascist magical wand is enough to prove that those political isms were the most congenial tonics their health demanded. So going on he said only a few socialists headed by Nehru have created a bubble of resentment against the present government of Germany but their activities are far from having any significance in India adding Germany's crusade against the enemies of Aryan culture will bring all the Aryan nations of the world to their senses and awaken the Indian Hindus for the restoration of their lost glory. So another senior RSS member, Goldwalker, also praised Nazism and believed the ideology should be applied to India, writing, the German race pride has now become the topic of the day. To keep up the purity of the race and its culture, Germany shocked the world by her purging the country of Semitic races, the Jews, Race pride at its highest has manifested here. Germany has also shown how well nigh impossible it is for races and cultures having differences to going to the root to be assimilated into one united whole and a good lesson for us in Hindustan to learn and profit by. But they're obviously praising Hitler, which is anti-Semitic, but even Savarka praised Hitler's treatment of the Jews. So in 1938, during the time of accelerating anti-Jewish legislation in Germany, Savaka suggested a similar fate for India's Muslims, a nation formed by a majority living therein. What did the Jews do in Germany? They, being in the minority, were driven out of Germany. So when you take that into account, it does really make it more complex why Hindu nationalists might love Israel, considering that they supported Adolf Hitler's policies in Germany and Mussolini's policies in Italy, which of course targeted Jewish people but I guess the through line here is that it's not that they necessarily just support fascism in you know old style 1930s Europe they more support extreme nationalism centered around an ethnicity so in their mind Israel is a good representation of what India should be like they should really make a nation centered around Hinduism which is a far cry from what India was meant to be founded on. Remember, India was meant to be a secular socialist republic. It was meant to be a bridge between the East and the West. It had you know, good relationships with both the Soviet Union and the United States. But what also really plays into this, I think as well, is of course, Hindu nationalists targeting Muslims. So when Modi came in, it unleashed a lot of more outward discrimination against Muslims. He enacted laws against, you know, like killing cows, which have led to Muslims being lynched by Hindu mobs. It's of course led to India being far more aggressive in Kashmir. I read an awful torture report 
of what they've been doing, encroaching in that territory, and it's really easy to draw parallels between what India are doing in Kashmir and what Israel are doing in certain parts of Palestine. But if you pay close attention to Indian politics, a lot of the time they talk about the Pakistani intelligence service really working inside India through Muslim communities to undermine Indian culture and Indian democracy. But a lot of the time they also blame Al-Qaeda and the Taliban and Al-Qaeda affiliates have done terrorist attacks in India. So what they see with Israel while it's fighting groups like Hamas, while it's fighting groups like Hezbollah, which often have a lot of sympathy from Islamic terrorist groups, especially the Sunni Hamas, which has historically had links with some members of Al-Qaeda and a lot of support from members of Al-Qaeda, including, of course, Bin Laden. But Hezbollah, which is obviously mainly influenced by Iran, is also one of these elements the Indians and Israelis see as a wider problem with Islamist terrorists. So because Muslims are the prime target of Hindu nationalists and the Indian far right, of course, that's why they have particularly liked the rise of people like Donald Trump talking about Muslim bans and Trump being very outward with his comments against Muslims. And then you have Netanyahu. While it's more a Palestinian issue with the Israelis, I'm talking about other things like Hezbollah in Lebanon and just general Islamist terrorists, which Israel have fought in the past and as most of you will know one of the key issues for most islamic terrorist groups is the whole israeli palestine conflict it was key to the creation of al-qaeda so what hindu nationalists feel with donald trump netanyahu is these people are taking back their countries they're not ashamed of their race they're not ashamed of their culture they're going to be strong they're going to stand up for it and they share a common enemy in political Islam, they share a common enemy in Islamic terrorism, but they also don't actually like Muslims in general. It's not relegated to violent extremists. So we've got through the cultural and more political issues, but I just wanted to end the video with talking about the more, I guess, concrete international links these countries have together to show why they are getting closer. So this one was an interesting one to me. So foreignpolicy.com reporting, Israel has replaced Russia as India's preferred all-season weapon supplier. Today, Israel is second only to Russia as India's largest weapon supplier. But while Russian supplies fell by 47% between 2015 and 2019, weapons imports from Israel increased by 175%. India is also the largest buyer of Israeli weapons, buying 46% of Israel's exports. And then I've also found this interesting. Indian police service trainees visit the Israel National Police Academy every year for training. The Indian Border Security Force uses Israeli developed smart fencing as well as radar and surveillance technology in the volatile Kashmir Valley. Now, I find that last part really interesting. Not only do right wing Israeli nationalists and Hindu nationalists feel their struggle in their respective countries is linked, the Israelis train the Indian police and actually help them with fencing in Kashmir just to make those links even closer together. And it's interesting to me how all these authoritarian countries, you know, Brazil, America, Israel, and India, how they all share this technology to oppress certain groups of people. So to conclude all this, India used to support the Palestinians because it shared some anti-colonial sentiment with Palestine, but due to the rise of Hindu nationalists, who have ties to the Nazis, who are inspired a lot by 1930s fascists, due to them rising on the political stage and eventually seizing power in 2014 and only expanding their power since then, this wave of nationalism has made a lot of Indians suddenly love Israel and draw parallels between the two countries and particularly love the very, very nationalist hard right slant it's going in since Netanyahu rose to power about 20 years ago. Of course, he hasn't been in for the whole 20 years, but on and off since the mid 90s. And a lot of Hindu nationalists fetishize Israel and feel like that is the way that India should be going forward. It should create Hindustan based around 
Hindu culture, Hindu religion, and it should use this idea to completely take over territories like the whole of Kashmir and really make Muslims second class citizens and expel them because India belongs to Hindus according to them. This is the same ideology of course Gandhi's assassin believed in because Gandhi went on a hunger strike to make the Indian government give promised aid to Pakistan after the partition and Godse as a member of the RSS felt he had to kill Gandhi for this. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please like the video, maybe subscribe to the channel. If you want to find me on social media at The Cavernacle, mainly on Twitter and Instagram, please check out my Patreon. Like I said before, all my stuff essentially is demonetized. So I don't make really any money from doing these videos. I just do it for the love of it and for you know educating people on topics I find interesting. If you want to follow anything else, in the description also my podcast medium all that good stuff is there and if you made it this far thank you for watching